Our lessons this week are about colors, the physics of light colors. And we'll start with where do colors come from? What is the origin of the colors that we see? Everybody likes colors. So Buddy the Elf asks, what's your favorite color? Maybe what Buddy ought to ask is, what's your favorite type of light? Because light is energy. It can be emitted, given off, and absorbed by materials. But what's really emitting light or absorbing light is the electrons of atoms. So if we want to understand the origin of colored lights, we have to take a quick look at how atoms work. In chemistry class, you learn that electrons orbit the nucleus in various levels and sublevels. Maybe you learn how to write an electron configuration. If you take a look at the modern view of how atoms are constructed, it gets pretty complicated. So instead, what we typically do is um, introduce the model of the atom sometimes called the Bohr model or the Rutherford Bohr model of the atom. And in this model, the electrons orbiting outside the nucleus each have a certain amount of energy. In other words, electrons can't be wherever they want to be. They are where they are. They are orbiting where they are orbiting because of the amount of energy that they contain. So there's only certain allowable orbits that correspond to certain amounts of energy for any given atom. However, if an electron gains or loses the right amount of energy, it can move to a different allowable orbit. Now the way that an electron might gain energy is by being struck by some form of electromagnetic radiation, for example, light. So if a light wave is intercepted by an electron, it can move to a higher allowable orbit for that particular atom. It requires just the right amount of energy to move from one orbit to another. In other words, there is a certain amount of energy associated with each orbit. So if you want to go from one orbit to the other, you have to have uh, what you might call exact change. This amount of energy to move from one level to another is called a quantum of energy. But because the different orbits are um, at different energy levels, there is a different amount of energy associated with each quantum, or quanta, the plural of quantum. So um, for any given element, the allowable orbits have a certain uh, quanta of energy necessary to move between the allowed orbits. Now, the allowed orbits for a given atom are limited in number and specific to that particular element. It has to do with, among other things, how much charge the nucleus has and how close it can pull the electrons. So each quantum corresponds to a certain amount of energy. Well, in terms of electromagnetic radiation, that means each has its own wavelength and frequency. They're all going at the speed of light. They have the same speed. So if speed is constant, then the um, wavelength and frequency are inversely related. Here we see that red light, for example, might have a wavelength of around 700 nanometers. A nanometer is a billionth of a meter, so 700 billionths of a meter the frequency associated with that wavelength is about 4.3 times 10 to the 14th waves per second. Blue, on the other hand, has a shorter wavelength of around 450 billionths of a meter and a higher frequency. When wavelength goes down, frequency goes up. Now, 
Electromagnetic radiation includes uh, all sorts of different um, things that we categorize as electromagnetic radiation, such as gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. And we call that the electromagnetic spectrum. But what we are concerning ourselves with in this lecture is only with that portion of the spectrum that we call visible light. Visible light has a wavelength of about 400 billionths of a meter to about 700 billionths of a meter. If it's somewhere within that range, a human with normal color vision is able to perceive those wavelengths as visible light. In other words, we have light detectors. We call them eyes. Now, let's go back to the uh, view of the atom that has these certain allowable orbits in which an electron can be. If you look at this diagram, you see five different allowable orbits. These are all allowable for the same electron. In other words, the electron will normally be there in the smallest orbit that says n equals 1. That's called its ground state. But if it absorbs the right amount of energy, it can jump up to uh, any one of these other allowable excited states. An electron can only stay excited for so long. Then it will lose that energy. It'll lose a certain amount of energy, a quantum and go back to the ground state. When it loses energy, it loses a particular amount of energy, and that particular amount of energy is associated with a particular wavelength. In other words, it will be a particular color if that light strikes our eyes. So each element has its own atom. Each one has a different number of electrons, and each of those electrons have a different sequence of allowable orbits. There's a lot of mathematics involved. Point being, though, that uh, atoms of the same element will be the same. So they will have the same allowable orbits and the same amount of energy that has to be absorbed to jump up to excited levels, and the same amount of energy that has to be given off when that electron falls back to this ground level. If it gains energy, the electron moves up. That's not what you see. When it gives off energy, it loses energy to its surroundings. That's when you can potentially see the energy as light. Since each element has a different set of electrons and a different set of allowable orbits, they have a different set of colors, a different set of wavelengths that they can give off. So what's shown here are several examples of what we call line spectra. It's possible to analyze the light given off by a particular element and see exactly what wavelengths are being given off. As you can see, each element has a unique pattern of energy that it gives off. Now, when we see something like, say, helium or neon, we see it as shown here. These are some of the noble gases and what they would look like if you make a sign out of them. So a neon sign is always a reddish orange. If it's not reddish orange, then it's not neon. It's either a mixture of gases or it's one of these other elements. But what's actually happening is that that is a combination of colors. So in other words, when you see neon, you see this reddish orange light. But if you could analyze that light, take it apart and look at each individual wavelength being given off, there's a couple of blue wavelengths, there's a green wavelength, and then there's yellow, orange, and red. So what's going on there? Why don't we see these different colors and instead we see only one? That has to do with how our eyes work. And that is the topic of another lecture. But that's where colors come from.
They come from electrons giving off energy as they move from an excited state back to the ground state. Since each element has a different set of orbits that uh, a different amount of energy is required to jump between, each element will give off different colors. If you have a mixture of elements, you will have a mixture of colors. But even for the same element, you have a mixture of colors as far as the human eye is concerned. So color is, in many senses, in the eye of the beholder.